Gunderson is the executive director of, if I got this right, electrification of transmissions globally for General Motors? Yes, very, very, very close. Okay. That's good enough. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a mouthful, I understand. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about here at the conference? A lot of discussion here about powertrain because there's so much uncertainty where it's going in the future. Yeah, that was actually the title of my uh, of my pitch was navigating the uncertainty. Uh, our panel was challenged with, you know, how do how do you meet the market needs of today and be ready for the future, right? And the first word that came to my mind was just what you said was uncertainty, the future uncertainty. I kind of went through a number of the good predictions that are out there and talked about, you know. Uh, you know, 2050 is a long way off, so uh, you know, predictions out to 2050 are, are hard to, there's a lot of uncertainty out that far, right? So how do you navigate that? What do you do, mm -hmm. right? And um, the, three, the three key items I tried to hit was that we need to be flexible. You need to be able to adapt to changes quickly that might occur in terms of uh, whether that's a powertrain mix and the timing of that mix or, you know, you know forms of powertrains or propulsion systems. Um, so flexibility, and, and flexibility comes in terms of resources, you know, how, uh, you know, how you train your people and get people ready, and also would come in terms of the technologies you might choose um, that would be uh, applicable across a number of scenarios. Number two was really around being what I call a utility player. You gotta, you're going to have to play in multiple propulsion spaces, uh, or all the propulsion spaces to some degree, and the strategic part of it is how deep and, and when. And then the third key of it, or the third uh, element, was partnering. And none, of, none of us can do this alone. So we, you know, as, as OEMs, we've got to partner closely with our suppliers to complement our core competencies. We've got to partner uh, even with other OEMs, like we have with Honda on fuel cells and things like that. And then uh, and startups, you know, like like Cruise Automation, things like that. So mm -hmm. that's what I talked about. Yeah. Uh, well, let's just look at transmissions as one, okay, one spot. Yeah. You know, we're already up to 10 speeds. Correct. Some other companies are talking maybe going right. beyond that. But others tell me, no, 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 with electrification, even with an internal combustion engine, you're not going to need as many gears. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think uh, we, uh, we, see, we see doing a whole lot of more, I'll say, traditional transmissions with more counts of speed. What we see are a lot of electrified transmissions, you know, transmissions that have one or more motor in them, like you see for our hybrids today, like in the Malibu or, you know, like our Malibu hybrid, mm -hmm. has, you know, or, or uh, uh, in our CT6 hybrid, for instance. You know, these are, these are electrified transmissions, or the Volt, for instance. Okay? Mm -hmm. So those are all gearboxes with, uh, uh, with multiple speeds and, and electric motors in them, so, yeah. It's amazing how many different approaches there are to doing hybrids, just as an example. GM had some years ago the dual mode hy hybrid, which right. packaged everything into right. the transmission. Right. I thought it was a brilliant idea, yeah. but but now you're not doing that. We Why? are actually doing that. Actually, so the, the hybrid that's in the Malibu and the hybrid that I mentioned on the CT6 um, do have two engines or two motors actually embedded in right in the transmission today. So and even the Volt is is set up very similarly. So right? this is so, sort of son of two mode. That's correct. It is. Son of, it is. It's the next generation of what you saw in the in the two mode. It is that. Yeah. Okay. And what what do you think might be coming next after that? Well, so. What we, what we would say is, uh, and what I was saying in there, is that these three lanes, uh, what I'll say, continued development of conventional propulsion systems with internal combustion engines with mild electrification. No, no tractive effort, if you will, from, electric, uh, uh, you know, from the electric portion of it. It's something we're going to continue and continue to evolve. And we talked about a few examples there. Hybrids, uh, the, all things hybrid, everything from uh, what I call a mild hybrid, a 48 volt hybrid, or even a belt alternator starter, all the way out to e revs like like the Volt, uh, things like that. Um, we we uh, we continue to plan to play there. In fact, I, I quoted something uh, in there that I just learned. We, we've made uh, 20 million battery cells for 73,000 PHEVs that we have on the road today. So we're well into this game, you know, and, and we plan to uh, to keep going. I mean, this is lane what I, what we called lane two, um, uh, that uh, that will coexist with lane one and lane three for some time, and lane three is pure electric, so the battery electric vehicles and things like that. So we, we talked a lot about, we're gonna have 20 new, all new electric vehicles by 2023, so that's, uh, there's a lot, a lot of exciting stuff happening. Theoretically, an electric car doesn't even need a transmission. You know, theoretically, it's, you could even run the, the electric motors in reverse, and that's how you get reverse. Correct. But they all have a transmission. Do you see it staying that way? Yeah. So, so some of them, some of them do. It really depends on what the, you know, uh, the I'll say the the power to weight of the vehicle, how heavy is the vehicle, and uh, you know what is the speed range of the of the motor or motors that you're using. Uh, but uh, there's actually quite a few number a number of technical papers on that today, um, and a lot of folks are showing that uh, even with a with with something that has a very large weight uh, with, a, with a small uh, you know, power output, a two-speed is actually something that uh, somebody might want, but you don't need the kind of gearing that we have today, a 12 yeah. or 10 or whatever speed you know, type transmission. Yeah. Decades ago, GM was famous for the two-speed slush box. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I hope it's not a slush box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, but that's right, yeah. What else? What are we missing here?
there anything else that you touched on or that you think is worth talking about right well, now? Well, what I did talk about was, uh, you know, um, from, a, from an EV perspective, you know, that's, you know, we, we've said a lot about that. We're very happy and very proud of our Bolt EV, it's 238 mile range. It's, uh, you know, it also won awards, 10 best engines award without an engine. So that was pretty exciting. Uh, um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know or not, but we've had uh, our Bolt and Bolt customers together, according to our OnStar data through February, have amassed 2.6 billion EV miles to this point. So this is a really growing field. We're getting a lot of really cool data. In fact, 19 million of those miles are uh, out of, uh, you know, with our with our car sharing service, Maven, right? So we're oh, learning in that space too, you know? So it's really, uh, um, it's, it's a really growing field and we're just gathering data like crazy here. And so, uh, really what are you learning from the data? So, uh, all, all kinds of things, first of all, and how to, you know, how to make, uh, you know, how our batteries are living. I mean, we're taking real-time data on, you know, what customers are doing to batteries, how they live in different uh, ambient environments and humid environments and things that, uh, some things surprise us, some things are behaving just as we expected, right? Um, and then also just you know how they how they generally drive you know and and in you know, areas where hey maybe we over designed this or we under designed that or, or those kinds of things right and um, and learning a little bit about you know how do they charge you know how often do they charge and you know how you know is range anxiety real or is that is it perceived and what are, you know what are they really doing and how do they behave you know and so uh, so that's all it's all really good, uh, good I gotta experience. believe that's very valuable very data because yeah. that's how they're actually using the car absolutely that's that's absolutely and, and uh, you know using our OnStar. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've had that for years. Really capitalizing on that data has, has been fantastic for us, right, to learn. So, yeah. Rick Anderson, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, very you. interesting stuff. Yeah, thank yeah. you. All right, very good. Great. Future mobility is about digitizing the driver, vehicle, and environment. Thanks to high-performance radar sensor technology, autonomous driving will soon be reality.